Chapter 5 At first it felt strange to be walking down the same old street, looking like someone else. Ellen was sure people were watching her and wondering why she was dressed like a boy. What should she say if a woman walked up to her and asked, Why is a girl wearing those clothes? It's not very seemly to show your legs. She'd pretend the woman had mistaken her for someone else. But after a while, in Ezra's old breeches, her legs free of skirts and petticoats, she found it was fun to stomp along the cobblestones. She forgot what people might say. It was fun to dodge the ox carts and the wheelbarrows and run against the wind with no cloak to hold her back. No one noticed her at all. When she came to the pump corner, she saw that Dicey and the two Brinkerhoff boys were having a snowball fight. That's a fair match, Ellen said to herself. She turned her head so Dicey could not see her. Let them fight it out. But she knew Dicey had seen her when she heard her call out, Stop! Ellen's heart almost stood still. New boy, Dicey called. What's your name? Why, Dicey didn't know her. It was just like being invisible. Dicey had looked at her and didn't know her. Ellen peeped over her shoulder just in time to see Aaron Brinkerhoff push Dicey against a tree trunk and hold her there while Arnie gleefully scrubbed her face with handfuls of snow. Stop! screamed Dicey. Stop! Two against one ain't fair! She kicked and twisted away from them. Then, to Ellen's surprise, Dicey turned and ran away, crying like a bawling calf. Ellen stood and stared at her. For a moment, she even felt sorry for her. Well, at least she didn't know me, Ellen said to herself. I feel invisible. I'm invisible, I'm invisible, she kept saying as she ran happily down the street. Already, she felt better about making the trip. And then she felt a whack on her back that sent her spinning across the slippery cobblestones. The blue kerchief with her grandfather's loaf of bread flew from her hands. Swift as hawks after a field mouse, the two Brinkerhoff boys swooped down and snatched up her blue bundle. Try and get it! Try and get it! Aaron called out. He held it out to her with an impudent grin on his face. When his brother Arnie grabbed for the bundle, Aaron snatched it away and ran. They played with it as if it were a ball, tossing it back and forth and daring her to chase them. Ellen stood frozen with fear. What if the bread was torn apart? and the snuff box fell out, and the British officers learned that Grandfather was a spy. It was too horrible to think of, Grandfather hanging on a gallows tree. Her hands became fists as she thought of how two laughing boys could put them all in such danger. Thieves, she could hear herself shouting. Stop those thieves! She surprised herself by shouting those words in a loud, strong voice. She surprised herself, too, by racing after the boys, dodging in and out of the crowds, tripping over children and ducking under the noses of dray horses. Stop those thieves! she screamed. They stole my bread! She ran up to two redcoats who stood on the steps of a bake shop eating hot little pies while they flirted with a group of kitchen maids. Please, sirs, she gasped. Those thieves have stolen my bread! The soldier shrugged and laughed. Plenty of bread inside. The baker has just opened his ovens. Now the boys were playing a game in front of a tailor's shop. They were tossing the blue bundle across his, his sign and hurling it between the two wooden blades of a giant pair of scissors. Around them, a crowd formed a circle to watch the fun. Give me my bread, Ellen shouted as she leaped from one side to the other. She felt as nimble as a lamb without her long skirts and petticoats, but she never was quick enough to catch the bread. Aaron mocked her. Give the poor child his bread. He's starving. Starving, starving, shrieked little Arnie. He held the bread out to her and then snatched it away when she jumped for it. Two beggars watched with hungry eyes. Their bony fingers reached out to grab the bread. Even the public pig who ate scraps of garbage in the streets raced around them with greedy, alert little eyes. The crowd laughed, but no one helped. A little old woman who swept the steps of the tailor's shop with a broom of corn straw called out sharply, What ails you, Brinkerhoff boys? Oh, 
always making trouble. Give the boy his loaf of bread. She stepped down into the street and shook her broom at them. Can't you see he's thin and hungry? Angrily, she pushed her way through the crowd. Her back was so bent she was hardly as tall as Ellen, but she seemed to know what to do. Here, she said as she thrust her broom handle into Ellen's hands. Here, trip them up. Bread is precious these days. Ellen snatched the broomstick from the old woman. Without a moment's hesitation, she raised it up and brought it down with a whack across Aaron's legs. Her eyes were blazing as she watched him duck out of her way. It made her feel good to hear him yell. Stop! And see him dance away from her. Arnie snatched the bundle from his brother's hands and whirling it about his head, he grinned at her. Try and get it! Try and get it! He shrieked as he turned to push his way through the circle of people. Ellen rushed after Arnie and whacked his legs too. Her anger was so great she whacked at his legs until he fell sprawling on the ground. Quick as a flash, she scooped up the bundle, dropped her broom, and looked for a way out of the circle. This way, cried the little old woman gleefully. She held out her arms and made an opening for Ellen to get through. Run like the wind, boy, she cried. They'll be after you. Ellen raced down the street. Her feet seemed to have wings. Where to go? Where to hide? She thought desperately as she looked over her shoulder and saw that the boys and the hungry beggars and even that awful public pig were after her. Two boys might catch a girl who never had run on cobblestones before, but no one could catch a girl who held her grandfather's secret snuff box in her arms. Stop him! She could hear Arnie Brinkerhoff shout. Stop the thief! The thief? Why, it was her loaf of bread. And why would they want it? It was just a game to them. No more important than a snowball. She jumped over the low stone wall of a churchyard and raced across the flat gravestones. Looking back, she could see that she must have lost the beggars and the pig. Only the boys were following her. And a church warden who ran after her, flapping his arms and shouting, Be gone! Be gone! Over the wall, she scrambled and into a street filled with hay carts going to the officer's stables. Under one cart and around another, she darted. Farmers shook their pitchforks at her as she whirled past. Don't alarm the horses, they cried, but Ellen didn't hear them. She had no idea where she was now as she raced around corners and down streets filled with rubble. Everywhere there were black walls of houses with roofs that had fallen in. Gasping for breath, she darted through a doorway of a broken down house and crept into an old fireplace to hide. She was sure she had outrun the boys, but she couldn't stop the shaking of her knees. They jerked up and down like puppets on strings. She sat down in the old ashes of the fireplace, tucked her arms around her knees, and put her head on her arms. Her breath came in great sobs and blew the ashes up around her, covering her breeches with a fine dust. This must be the way rabbits feel when the hounds chase them. If only I were back at home, I could crawl into bed and pull the covers over my head. Those boys, those horrible boys, to spoil everything at the beginning. It wasn't to have been such a long walk to Front Street. She had done it before with Grandfather. And now I don't know where I am, she wailed. Grandfather had never brought her to the west side of town, where the great fire burned block after block, block late last September. It made him too sad to look at it, he said. Six hundred houses had been burned, and Trinity Church. It was lucky the whole city didn't burn up. Slowly she began to collect her wits. Grandfather would have to find someone else to carry his message. She'd go home and tell him he had asked too much of her. She couldn't go out on the streets and roister about like a boy. She couldn't go sailing across the bay to a place where she had never been and find a man she had never seen. That was asking too much of a ten-year-old girl. She'd go home and tell him he must find someone else. She waited a long time to make sure the boys had not followed her. As she waited, she grew calm and a strange happy feeling came over her. She 
Ellen Tolliver had fought two boys in front of a crowd of people. She not only had raced them and beaten them, but she had saved her grandfather's message. The bread was here with the snuff box still inside. She could hardly believe it. As she sat quietly, a new feeling of confidence came to her. Perhaps I can try to walk to the docks after all. She took a deep breath. Perhaps I can go to Jersey after all. Grandfather said it wasn't hard. I can start over again from here if I can find my way to Front Street. Very carefully, she crept out of the fireplace and looked around. There were tents where people must be living amidst the broken down walls. But she saw no one around, only stray cats that slunk away in the rubble. It must be getting near 10 o'clock, she said to herself. There were no church bells to ring the hour, for the wardens had hidden the bells when the British came. She looked up at the hazy sun that struggled wanly in the sky, gray sky. Grandfather always pointed out directions by the shadows the sun cast. If the sun is on my left side, that must be the east, and the east river would be that way. Very carefully, she picked her way through the black rubble flecked with white snow. And at last she came to the streets lined with fine houses and beech and sycamore trees. These streets looked familiar, and the breeze had the salty fish smell of the river. As she stepped quickly along, she had a feeling the trip wouldn't be so bad after all. <laughs>